Hey guys, it's me Ryan and welcome back to my YouTube channel. And in today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you how to sew this fully tailored bespoke chest welt pocket. As you can see, it's a fully functioning chest welt and with no stitching visible from the front, which is exactly what you want when it comes to a tailored bespoke chest welt pocket. Um, it is a really, it's kind of a long process. Um, it's not too long, it's um, long if you've done it for the first time. Once you've done it a few times, it's really quick. Um, it's a very simple process, honestly, it's not as complicated as you probably think it is. Um, it's a very, very good method. A lot of high-end tailors I know use this method. Um, and as you can see, it creates an absolutely beautiful bespoke chest welt pocket. Um, this video is very in-depth because I want you guys to learn as much as you can. So if you guys want to know how to create this very beautiful tailored chest welt pocket, please just keep watching. So I first want to say before we get started, I'm using calico and I'm also using a pen. Um, the reason why I'm using these two is for demonstration purposes only. On a real jacket, I will always use chalk and of course it will be the fabric that I'm working with. Typically it will be the jacket front, the left front of the jacket. But I will be using pen to do all my markings today simply for demonstration purposes only. Simply because it's a massive contrast to the fabric and you guys can clearly see it. Again. I will always typically, well I will always use chalk to mark everything because that can be removed so never ever ever use pen on your actual garment only if you're doing a mark up because you can see the lines and see where you have gone. Um, so that is the reason why I'm using pen. Normally I will always use chalk but this is just for a demonstration. Now. This line here represents the armhole. Of course, typically a armhole is curved, but I've just done a straight line just to make it easier and simpler for you guys to see. Now, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do to start drafting your welt is you're going to want to take your ruler and mark four centimeters in from the armhole. Now, first you're gonna to to choose the height from the armhole where your breast welt pocket will be. Typically they are in line or somewhere near um, as in height where the front notch is on the armhole. It kind of is a design preference but typically keep the height as in the height of where it is on the chest um, around the same height as the front notch on the armhole. That is just traditionally the way it's done and I think that is just the way most people do it. Of course if you guys want to go a bit lower, if it's a design choice or higher, it's totally up to you but this is the traditional method. So once you once you guys have your stitching line on the front marked, place your ruler on the stitching line directly on there and mark in four centimeters. This is where the welt will start. Again, typically it is four centimeters in from the stitching line. Um, again, that is just traditionally how much it is. Um, some tailors or some designers will do more, some may do less. Again, this is just the typical way. So mark four centimeters in from the stitching line and that will be one end of where your welt will be. So once you've marked four centimeters, take your ruler and from that mark, mark the length that you want your welt pocket to be. Now, typically welts are anywhere from four to four and a half inches, maybe even five, depending on the designer. Four inches, four, four to four and a half inches is about 11 to 12 centimeters, I think. So I'm gonna be doing mine 11 centimeters long. So from that mark, you have just put at four centimeters away from the stitch line. Mark the length of your welt. Again, I will be doing mine at 11 centimeters. So I'm going to go from that four centimeter mark directly down to 11 centimeters, like so. Now you have the length of your welt. You can't have a welt that is straight across on a chest, simply because if we do the welt the way this is marked, when the jacket is worn, because this is straight, it will kind of warp around the chest which isn't flattering and doesn't give it a really good look. So what we need to do is create a slope so the welt pocket is on a slant so when it is worn on the chest it sits beautifully flat and across the chest. So in order to do this, from that four centimeter mark at the end of your welt, the way I'm doing this now is so the slant is across the chest so the highest point will be pointing towards the armhole. If you guys want to do the slant that is 
in line or parallel to the shoulder, which a lot of famous tailors will do. Just do what I'm about to do here, but do it this side. Um, again, this is the traditional way. I do like a slant that is a breast well pocket. I do like it when they are parallel to the shoulder, which normally I do do. But for this demonstration, I will be doing it the traditional, typical way. So in order to create the slant, what you're going to want to do is from that four centimeter mark is make sure everything is at the 90 degree and parallel is mark up about 12 millimeters so that is almost that is just under 1.5 centimeters there And now once you've created that 12mm vertical line from the 4cm mark, simply join the corner here with a diagonal line across there. Like so. And that new diagonal line will be the placement for your welt. So as you guys can see, it is now on a slant and that will fit beautifully across the chest. Again, if you want your breast welt pocket to be parallel with your shoulder, just do that, but this side. Now I'm just going to extend these lines or the ends of the welt up, simply so we know where they are. Now it's time to create the depth of the welt or the pocket itself. So typically they are around, some tailors could do an inch, some do more, some could even do less. I personally like mine about two centimeters, so that's about 20 mil. So in order to do that, you're gonna to wanna to mark it parallel from the diagonal line we just created. So mine is 20 millimeters or two centimeters. So I am just going to do that here on my pattern master. So there's a centimeter, 1.5, two centimeters, or 20 mil, and mark parallel. That is now the depth of the pocket. So now we have the placement lines all in place for the welt pocket. What you're going to do is take a long darning needle which is a long, very long, um, essentially hand, just base stitch. So basically that is a running stitch across the diagonal line, which is the bottom of the welt here, and also the sides. That will just give you a idea later on where everything is, because from the other side, you're not gonna be able to see it um, without the basting threads. So be sure to base mark the bottom of the welt and also the sides. Again, the bottom is the diagonal line we created. So now you have the bottom of your welt mark as well as the sides, we can proceed to the next step. Put this to the side for now because next we're gonna form the welt itself. So in order to form the welt, you're gonna to wanna to take a piece of interfacing and on the interfacing, mark the depth of the welt. So again, mine was 20 millimeters or two centimeters. And then to the bottom of that, add a centimeter and mark that line. So as you guys can see, there is two centimeters or 20 millimeters, the same, which is the same depth as my welt pocket. And then I added another centimeter, which will come in useful later. And I've marked that centimeter line there. That is very important. The length of this doesn't matter because it's gonna be cut down in a moment anyway. So what you're going to do is once you've cut a piece of interfacing and marked it the depth of your pocket and added a centimeter, is take your welt, take the markings where your welt will be, and place, making sure that it is glue side up facing towards you, place on your welt, making sure that this marked one centimeter line is exactly on top of the bottom of your welt, which again is the diagonal line that is thread marked. So just place that directly on top. So once that is placed directly on top, 
Again, making sure that one centimeter marked line on the interfacing is directly on top of the bottom of your welt, which is the marked diagonal line. You can pin it just to keep it in place for now. So just pop a pin in just to hold it there for the next step. And the next step is simply take your ruler and mark each end. So where we extended the ends of the welt up earlier here, continue that line down on top of the welt. These will give us our markings in order to cut it to the exact size of the welt. So I'm just going to take my ruler and make sure they are exactly in line and extend those on to the interfacing itself and do the exact same for the other side like so now this is the point where if you're working with stripes for example pinstripe or any sort of check um, say let's pretend that there are pinstripes going down here this is where on the interfacing you're going to want to mark where those pinstripes hit the interfacing. You don't have to mark them all, you can just mark any every other stripe um, as well as horizontally. And if you do that, that will ensure later on the welt lines up perfectly on the front with your pattern. If you guys want to see a separate video on pattern matching, please let me know. But this, this is the point where you will mark the lines on the interfacing as well, ensuring later on they will be lined up. So once you have the interfacing marked again with any lines for any patterns vertically or horizontally you can just simply unpin it like that and cut that piece up those lines and then just cut the piece like so and this will create the exact size for your welt pocket. Again, making sure that the glue side of the interfacing is facing up towards you because if it's not, it will later on, the welt pocket will turn out the other way. So make sure at this point, the interfacing is facing up towards you. That is very important. Now, in order to form the welt itself, take a piece of your cloth, making sure it's wrong sides up. So the wrong side is facing towards you and take the and take the first bit interfacing we just marked, again this is contrast for demonstration purposes, and place it on your cloth, making sure that the one centimeter line is marked on both sides, and just place that in the middle of your cloth with enough room around it because we're gonna be making some markings once this is fused on. And once that is on your cloth like that, go and fuse it straight on, and then once you've done that, come back and I'll show you guys the next step. So once it is on the cloth, again, fused to the wrong side, you're going to make some markings. Now, the markings you're going to do are, first of all, place your ruler flush with the bottom of the interfacing and just draw a line, again flush, um, out. So I'm really just going to extend either side of the interfacing like that. But make sure that the first line you mark is parallel and flush with the bottom of the interfacing. Now the next line is the top. Mark 1.5 centimeters parallel above, making sure it's parallel and just draw that line there. So one line flush with the bottom of the interfacing, another one 1.5 centimeters. And then lastly on the sides just draw Again, two parallel lines that are one centimeter out from the interfacing. So once you've done that, just cut the shape out and that would be your welt. So now let's move on to the pocket. So place your welt towards one side as well as you can just place it on top of 
your cloth or your markings and just place that to one side. So typically for pocketing material, for suits or for any sort of formal jacket or any jacket like this, um, you will use some cotton Silesia, um, that's how I pronounce it anyway. Um, I'm just using some regular cotton here, it's quite heavy so um, again for demonstration purposes only. So I will tell you guys the measurements for the pocketing but I do first want to explain them to you so you have a bit more of an understanding um, and it will make more sense. So if you guys remember our welt itself or the interfacing was 11 centimeters long. We then added a centimeter each side just now when we cut out the welt. So that is 13 centimeters. Typically the pockets on a breast welt pocket are six inches or around 15 centimeters deep. Now that is easy because you just make the depth however deep you want. Now in order to get the width again it is 11 centimeters we created and then we added the two centimeters on like I said so that equals 13 centimeters. You then need another centimeter each side um, that allows for later on when we start to sew the pocketing together so that is 15 centimeters in total. So in order to do that again just take your ruler I always use my pattern master and mark a square that is in this instance 15 by 15 centimeter so there is our 15 by 15 centimeter square now we can't just cut this out and use this as the pocketing reason being is our pocket itself or our welt pocket is slanted so as you guys remember at the very beginning when we drew the parallel line we slanted the pocket by 12 millimeter and that's exactly what we need to do on the pocketing as well or the pocket lining and that is because if you have it square it's just not going to match up or it's not going to be able to stitch onto this later because this is again slanted so in order to do that again as you guys remember earlier as well we slanted it on the right side of the welt so what you're going to do to the pocketing is measure down 12 millimeters from the right hand side edge here again that is exactly what we did earlier when we measured up 12 millimeters to slant the pocket on the markings itself so I'm just going to measure down 12 millimeters and just mark it there like so and then again like we did earlier by joining the corners with a diagonal just join the corner here to that 12 millimeter marking with a diagonal line like so and that is your slanted pocket bag ready to be cut out it is that simple this is doubled up so I have two and I'm just going to take my scissors and cut this out the sides the bottom and the slanted edge as that is the top And there you have your two pocketing pieces. I'm just going to mark an X on the bottom just so we know which side's the right and which side's the wrong side. So now it's time to construct the welt itself. So take one pocket bag and just put one to the side. So next take a welt and place it directly in the middle of one side of your pocketing. Now try and get the sides as even as possible. They won't be perfect because it is on a slant but just put raw edge to raw edge like so and get that as centered as you can like that. Again making sure the interfacing is facing up towards you so you can see that clearly. Once that is done, you're going to want to take it to your sewing machine and stitch a six millimeter or a quarter of an inch seam allowance just on the welt only. So start from the edge of the welt there to this other edge here. There's no need to go through the, other, the excess pocketing. So stitch a six millimeter seam across there and then once you've done that, come back and I'll show you the next step. 
So I stitched the 6mm seam at the top and I also pressed the seam open just to make sure that it's flat and as you guys can see the welt is forming already. Once that's done what you're going to do is fold your welt over like this and then fold it back on itself using the edge of using the edge of the interfacing as a guide and then just using your fingers press it flat like so ensuring that that is folded on itself so again fold the welt back on itself at the edge of the interfacing like so and just finger press it there now what you're going to do is just take a pin and pin each side to keep it in place pin one side there and before I pin the other side I'm just going to put my finger in the middle there just to slightly raise it because that will come in very useful later on and then once that's done pop a pin in the other side so once each side is pinned and again the welt is folded back on itself using the end of the interfacing as a guide take it to your sewing machine and stitch right next to the interfacing edge here so right here down each side back tacking at the start there but when you get to the end here do not back tack leave long tails because they will come in very useful later on so take it to your sewing machine and stitch right next to this interfacing edge here again back tacking at there at the beginning and then leaving long tails at each end and then once you've done that come back and I'll show you the next step now what you're going to do next is take your chalk or your marking tool um, you guys will probably be using chalk if you're not doing a mark up and just mark at each end here on the pocketing just extending the line and that will as you guys can see there there that will be a guide for the cutting we're about to do next so take your scissors I'm going to use a small scissors for this because I don't want to cut into the welt itself and I'm going to cut some lines into this that will um, enable us to turn it through later on that would be really nice and really crisp so what I'm going to do is first cut a triangle here into the top of the welt again without through the welt only not the pocketing and do not get hit any of the stitching like that and repeat the same for the opposite side like that trim the sides of the welt without cutting into the pocket bag so just trim them down slightly like that and again do the same for the other side and then cut in to those lines that we had just marked on the side here again without going into the stitch in And then trim each side of the welt and then cut the same diagonal lines we did at the top and the bottom of the welt again without going into the stitching they should have something that looks a bit like this And you can also trim the pocketing down to that line as well. So once that's all trimmed, you should have something that looks a bit like this. And then what you're going to do is press out as best you can 
these little side seams that we stitched up earlier like so and once they're pressed open we can just turn the welt right way through like so and take something to poke out your inner corners I normally use just the ends of my scissors if you have a point turner even better just be really careful not to poke again holes in the fabric because that is something we do not want like that and then just give that a finger press right now and there you can see we have the start of the welt with one pocket bag already attached so once you have your welt turned out take it to your iron and press it i'm also going to press mine with a tailor's clapper after just to make sure it's really pressed and then come back and i'll show you the next step so once it is all pressed what you're going to do next is where we left the long tails of thread open up that side seam very gently do not like do not damage your cloth or the thread but open up very slightly just until we see that line we marked on the interfacing at the one centimeter mark that is very important because we need that line later on in order to stitch this to the cloth or the front of your jacket itself so as you can see i've opened up the sides so when i turn it over as you can see i can see that line under there that we marked earlier at the one centimeter that this is a very important step so just open up the side seams just enough until you can turn the welt and see that one centimeter mark that we created earlier on but before we stitch on the welt turn over your cloth or your sample piece and take and we need to reinforce the back you could use fusible interfacing but that is something that I don't recommend a reinforcement because it can slightly stretch the cloth. So to reinforce, I'm just gonna take a bit of pocket material and place that directly in the middle of the basted line. So from the back, the basted line is the bottom of your welt and just make sure that that bottom of your welt is just in the middle of the reinforcement and then baste this in place like that. And once that's basted in place, just keep it there. So once the back is reinforced, flip it back over like so. And then place, what you're gonna do then, once your cloth is reinforced, is take the welt and flip it so you can see the one centimeter line we had previously marked, that is on the inside of the interfacing and place that one centimeter line directly on top of the bottom of the welt. Again, the bottom of the welt is the diagonal line that is thread basted. At this point, you can actually remove the basting stitch from your diagonal line because it is marked already underneath with some pen or in your case chalk if you're not doing a mock-up. And again, place that one centimeter line there directly on top of the bottom of your welt. And again, that is the slanted line that we just pulled the thread basting out of. And once that is all lined up, normally you, you should baste, but for speed, I'm just gonna take a pin because I prefer to pin this part and just pin that in place like so. Again, now at this point is if that's basted, you can flip the welt up just to check that everything is lined up if, if you have any pattern um, any check any stripes just to check it's all lined up if not it's worth taking the time to go and create another welt it takes what 10 minutes um, not even that because you do not want to be faffing about with a cloth just in case you stretch it or if you start moving things about things won't be in line and it can just cause you a lot of trouble so do make another welt if things aren't lined up correctly this should be if you follow this tutorial um, but if you've made a mistake on your marking no worries just create another welt because nothing is sewn on just yet now once that stitch line is all lined up with the bottom of your welt like we just done go to your sewing machine and starting on the ends of the welt and the welt only stitch along this line start at the beginning of the welt here and back tack 
and then stop at the end of the welt here and back stitch. If you if you can see your needle is going to go over here, just use the hand wheel or lower your stitch length because if you go over, it will cause some problems later when turning this out, and that's and you do not want any problems with turning it out. So start at the very edge of the welt here and end at the very edge of the welt here. No further, no less. And then once you've stitched that, come back and I'll show you the next step. So once you've stitched in that one centimeter mark line from the beginning of the welt to the end of the welt, no less or no further, take your scissors once again and just cut diagonally in at the top of the welt about a centimeter. So once you've stitched on top of that line, on the line of the interface in the one centimeter marking line, just pull the seam allowance over like this. Now take your other pocket bag and line it up. So where the markings are on your cloth, this is the higher side, this is the lower side. Take your second pocket bag, the higher side is this side, the lower side is that side. Then flip your pocket bag up like that. So it is squiffed. And the reason why you want it on an angle is because when it's sewn and pulled through, it will all match. If not, it will be squiffed and it will be twisted and it just won't turn out right. So make sure that the high side of the pocket bag is on the high side of your markings on your cloth, the low side is on the low side, and then simply flip it up, making sure it's squiffed like that. Now, pull back this seam allowance here and just pull your pocket bag down until it touches that stitching line that we just created by stitching across the welt on that one centimeter marked line. So again, make sure that the pocket bag is underneath the welt, touching the stitching line, and it's squiffed that way, like so. As you can see, it's slightly squiffed. You don't want it to look any other way. Now once that's there, take a pin, just to make sure that it stays. And next to the welt, not on the welt, next to the welt, so you're only going through your cloth and the pocketing, stitch at the beginning of this diagonal cut here to the beginning of this diagonal cut here. Don't go any further or don't go any less. Back tack at each end and once you've done that come back and I'll show you the next step. Once that stitching is done you should be able to still turn back your welt, flip over your cloth. At this point you can remove the basting stitch that is holding the reinforcement in place. As you can see my reinforcement has slightly gone off but it will still work perfectly fine. Now as you guys can see we have a bottom line of stitching here which is the longer line and then just above that we have a shorter line of stitching. Take the chalk and whatever you're using to mark and draw a line directly smack bang between these two lines. It has to be right in the middle. Mark in a centimeter in from the top stitching line, which is the smaller stitching line. Just mark, again, I'm just gonna use a pen for demonstration purposes. Mark about a centimeter in that end, and also a centimeter in that end. Once you have Mark the centimeter in from each end of the smaller stitching line. Just mark, and again, I'm gonna use a pen just so you guys can see properly, but typically this is, I will do it with chalk. Mark that blue line or the middle line exactly where you marked in a centimeter from the top smaller line. And then using a ruler, you can either do it by hand, but typically it's easier to use a ruler. I will join up those lines so they create a elongated triangle shape. 
and this will form the stitching line or the line where you're gonna cut to pull the entire pocket through like so so as you guys can see it has formed some a sort of elongated triangle and that is where you're gonna cut through before we cut through flip it over and I use a pin and I push back the seam allowance on the welt itself and I just pin that back the reason why I do that is because and I will also do the same for the pocketing and the reason why I do this is because you do not want to cut through anything else except for the cloth itself and the reinforcement on the back that's all you want to cut through not the pocketing or the welt just the cloth itself and the reinforcement on the back this is the scary part this is where we cut through I'm gonna take my rotary cutter and make a small incision on that middle line as you can see there there's a small incision on that middle line then I'll take my smaller scissors and I'll follow that line through cut in only the reinforcement and the cloth itself no pocketing or welt and I'll cut through directly up to that point and then the elongated triangles right up to the end of the stitching it's very important you're accurate here like that now comes the part where you can pull it all through before you pull it all through I'm just going to take these pins out because they're not needed before you pull it all through it's worth if you have well you should have chalk lines on the front make sure they're all rubbed off again I use pen for demonstration purposes only and any excess thread I'm just gonna move to the side now it's time for the moment of truth or the fun part is turning it through so first take the top pocket piece without the welt and pull it through like so and then and just pull it underneath then take the piece with the welt attached and pull it through like so and then from the other side just make sure everything is laying flat what I like to do is once you pull the pocket bag through is the front of the welt or here just turn it up and you'll see the seam allowance there just push that flat with your fingers and then the reinforcement over and pull the front down and just press and then I'm going to take this to the iron and press and then also press with the tailor's clapper and then I'll come back and show you guys how to finish this off that is the result after you've pressed it with the tailor's clapper and as you can see it's a absolutely beautiful tailored welt pocket any stray threads just snip off now we're not quite done because as you can see it pulls up we need these ends here to be stitched down to the fabric but we're not going to edge stitch here because that can kind of look very amateurish don't be wrong if it's in the design do it but for a spoke tailored welt I prefer this way turn it over when you turn it over as you can see there are the triangles we cut earlier just tack them down with some thread and then the other one is there as I, as I said earlier my reinforcing moved a bit so this one won't be tacked but I will tack this one tack these these triangles will be pointing up because it was an elongated triangle shape we cut so when these triangles are pulled through just push them up like that you can press them into place and hand stitch them to the reinforcing only just so they stitch down you do not have to 
do not stitch them through to the actual fabric itself because you don't want to see any stitching on the front at all. Just hand stitch them to the reinforcing only. In order to stitch down these sides, turn it over and through the fabric, the cloth itself, you'll be able to feel the ends of the welt. I like to take a pin and pop it just above the ends of the welt because then you will know where to start stitching and I'll do the same for the other side like so and then using silk thread I'm just going to use the same basting thread I've been using for demonstration purposes only you're going to want to herringbone stitch or cross stitch through the back of the fabric catching the smallest bit of the ends of the welt itself so it only catches the back side and in that way once it's stitched down from the front you will not see any stitching on the sides but these will be tacked down just like this sample here as you can see from the front as you can see from the front there's no stitching visible but it's tacked down and that is because from behind it's been very carefully cross stitched through this fabric catching the slightest bit of the welt fabric itself holding it in place without showing any stitching on the front so do that and once that's done give it a good press so once you've done that stitching from the back as you can see the welt is now secu secured it is the ends are stitched down from behind and there's no visible stitching from the front um, I use basting thread so it's not as strong um, if you guys are doing it properly use silk thread I actually use the same silk thread that I use to do handmade buttonholes because it's very very strong um, and the last thing to do once that's done is take it to the sewing machine fold the side and using a centimeter two centimeter seam allowance I go as close to the actual cloth edge as possible is stitch down the side cross the bottom and then turn this and back up this side to close the pocket bag and then with my scissors I will just trim off any excess so as you guys can see I have now stitched each side of the pocket bag bottom and this side you can do that before tacking the welt down if you want to I just choose to do it last let's go give it one final press and then you have a fully bespoke tailored chest breast welt pocket so I've just overlocked the edges because this is a demonstration piece but that is how you create a fully tailored chest welt pocket. Um, this is a really really good method and it is used a lot in um, tailored bespoke garments by a lot of tailors around the world. It's a fantastic method and it's actually really simple when you learn how to do it. So I really hope this video helped. As you can see it's a fully functioning chest welt pocket. Sides are stitched down from behind, no visible stitching. Again on the actual garment there will not be any pen I will use chalk all the way through um, and basting stitches but for this demonstration I use pen simply so you guys could see it and it's just for a demonstration only but again of course on the actual garment I always use chalk so I really hope this video helped and um, if you guys create this let me know and I absolutely love this way and as you can see the results are fantastic oh thank you guys so much for watching this video I really really hope it helped um, as you can see if you followed every step it's actually not that complicated to create this um, as you can see it's a very stunning pocket when done correctly and it's my favorite way of creating a chest well pocket um, I have much more tutorials coming up but if this video did help you guys out in any way shape or form please let me know down below and if you do create this for yourself please be sure to tag me in your photos if you post them on Instagram that is also linked down below as well subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already and, and like this video if you want to see more from me and again thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video bye guys